All right, so our last chapter, chapter 25. So in this chapter, we're going to talk about human growth population. The growth of the world's population has been steadily rising um, to the present size of 7.6 billion. Now it's been rising through something, well, it's something that we call or refer to as exponential growth. Um, prior to 1750, the growth of the human population was relatively slow, but the population then began to increase very rapidly. The growth rate, and this is because the growth rate is exceeding um, anything we've ever seen before. So, um, so the growth rate is the difference between the number of people born per year, so that's the birth rate, and the number of people who die each year, or the death rate. So currently, the birth rate is roughly uh, 19 per thousand per year. The death rate is 7.6 per thousand per year. That means that the world's growth rate is 19 minus 7 divided by 1,000. It's roughly 1.1%. So each year, the, the world's population is getting larger, and then it's getting larger than it was the year that it previously increased, and then it increased even larger than the year that it had previously increased. So what we are seeing is that each year, the world's population is, excuse me, each year the world's population is skyrocketing. And it's growing at a rate greater than it was the year before. Biotic potential is the maximum growth rate under ideal conditions. Usually there are certain things like limiting factors that help keep a population in check. Limiting factors can be anything that limits the growth of a population, like uh, a limited food resources or limited space, anything that's going to slow down population growth. When we have limiting factors, the population is going to level off at the carrying capacity. The carrying capacity is the maximum population that the environment can support. Some think that the carrying capacity of the Earth may be between 50 and 100 billion people. Others think that humans have, um, that we already have more humans than the Earth can adequately support. Countries can be broadly divided into two groups. More developed countries, countries like it, countries in North America and Europe, um, where population growth is pretty modest. Um, between 1850 and 1950, more developed countries doubled their populations due to modern medicine and improved socioeconomic con conditions. The decline in the death rate was followed eventually by a decline in the birth rate. As a result, the more developed countries experienced only relatively modest growth since 1950. The growth rate for um, more developed countries as a whole is roughly 0.3%. In contrast to other more developed countries, growth in the United States has not really leveled off. Um, it's now at 320 million and it continues to increase. Most of that population growth, though, is due to immigration and not necessarily to an increased birth rate. The less developed countries, so some countries in Asia, Africa, and Latin America, the population growth is going to be pretty dramatic. The death rate in the less developed countries declined pretty steeply following World War II due to the development of modern medicine. However, the birth rate remains exceptionally high. The growth rate for uh, less developed countries peaked at 2.5% between uh, 1960 and 1965. Since the gro since then, the growth rate for the less developed countries has declined a little bit, um, but it hasn't declined in all less de less developed countries. Between 2000 and 2050, the population of less developed communities or countries may jump from five to eight billion. Most of this increase will occur in Asia. Um, AIDS is slowing the growth of the African population and continued growth in Asia is expected to cause um, acute water scarcity, a significant loss of biodiversity, and more urban pollution. Populations have three age groups, the pre-reproductive stage, reproductive stage, and post-reproductive stage. An age structure diagram is simply a plot of the proportion of individuals in each group. The replacement reproduction is if each couple has two children. This will still cause populations to increase in size because of our life expectancy, but most but most people will become parents, grandparents, or even great-grandparents, resulting in increase in the population. 
Here's an example of a couple of age structure diagrams. This is going to be um, what sort of the structure looks like in an in a less developed country. We see that the largest group is going to be the pre-reproductive stage, followed by the reproductive stage and the post-reproductive stage. In other words, those in the reproductive stage are having more offspring than they are replacing in and of themselves. So instead of two children for every couple, we're seeing that one couple is having three, four, five children. And so there are more children than there are in the reproductive stage. And there's significantly more individuals in the reproductive stage than the post-reproductive stage. So in other words, a population that is that has an age structure diagram shaped like this is going to be growing significantly and rapidly. In more um, developed countries, we're seeing age structure diagrams more shaped like this where individuals in the reproductive stage are having um, the same number as or fewer children than themselves. So this would be couples having one or two children or couples choosing not to have children at all. We're starting to see fewer individuals in the pre-reproductive stage, fewer children than individuals of reproducing age. Um, this in a population that has an age structure shaped like this is it going to grow very, very slowly or not at all? In this chapter, they have you calculate the annual growth rate of a population experiencing a birth rate and a death, um, a birth rate given and a death rate given. I am not going to ask you to do this. Um, you can go back through this text and look at how to calculate the annual growth rate. We did include it on a slide earlier, but I am not going to expect you to do this for homework or an exam. You should be able to compare some of the characteristics of more developed countries with those of less de developed countries and also know um, the relative population sizes and growth models. Um, and, and review age structure diagrams. Um, if you were given one, you should be able to determine if the population is growing or declining. All right, please let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns.